There are people who operate in gratitude and they find gratitude in every area of their lives. And then there's the other side of that. There are people who look at things and will find something to complain about about everything. What side of the fence do you want to be on? Hello. Today we are drinking Sweet Red by Sutter Home. So grab your bevy, your tea, your water, your wine, whatever floats your boat, and let's get into it. So there's this meme going around on social media. It's been going around for a while, and it was like, the one thing that I'm most surprised about with adulting is how constant it is. And I related so much but i also felt this way since i was a teenager i always felt like there's all these amazing things that i want to do these dreams i have and you got to put in some time and some consistency and i remember feeling like i gotta show up every single day and do this every day that's tiring it is so tiring to have to show up all the time and give my energy and you just keep going until the end that sounds draining and when you think of it in that way it absolutely is when i thought about how constant it is to have to get up and run a business and constantly show up. If I wanted to keep growing, keep being successful, I subconsciously and consciously stopped myself from really going after it because I was thinking in my mind that I would not continue. This really feeds into my self-trust video and how not trusting yourself to see it all the way through to go the extra mile will stop you from going after anything you want. Everything is growing and changing at all times. Your body, your mind, things around you, everything is shifting, everything is evolving. It's just like when people are trying not to age and you're kind of watching from the sidelines like, who gonna tell them? It's gonna happen. So you have a choice of perspective. You get to look at it. You either say, I have to do this or I get to do this. And we can apply this to every area of our lives. There's nothing in this world that thrives without maintenance. If you don't take care of your body, it will eventually catch up to you. If you're eating poor things, it's gonna catch up to you. If you are never working out, as you get older, your bones and your muscles are gonna feel weak. Everything has to be maintained. I remember I used to want quick fixes on things. Set it and forget it. So I wanted to be able to work out for like a month and I want that body to stay. I urge you to watch this whole video and I urge you to take in what I'm saying and to actually put it to practice. So many of us are suffering because we are going against the laws of nature. We wanna stay young when we're going to age. Age. and the one thing that I have always appreciated was age because it's not that I'm just getting older I get to get older I get to continue living life I get to learn wisdom and apply it I get to see my family and see my child grow up and spend more time with my best friends and the people I love I have always seen birthdays that way and celebrating each year here on earth it's sad and it's so unrealistic witnessing so many people wanting to be younger and they're not allowing themselves to just flow they're not allowing themselves to self actualize in the stage that they're in it's obvious it's also obvious when you see people embracing where they are enjoying that and learning to create the best life at the stage that they're at this mindset applies to everything that you do it's not to say that you're not gonna feel some fear around getting older you know losing loved ones or getting sick your body changing your looks changing you know we are creatures of comfortability and we don't want things to change or so we think lately I've been practicing really putting in the I get to mindset. As an exhausted parent, you know, if my child wakes me up in the middle of the night, it is easy to get up and be frustrated. You know, even though I go in there to comfort him, I'm like, I can't wait to get back to bed. This is ridiculous, I'm so tired. I got this to do in the morning and this and this and this. And I really started talking to myself and saying, I get to take care of this little boy that I prayed for. This little boy that is alive and healthy and well, I get to go in there and I get to cuddle him and comfort him and put him back to bed. And also, I have limited time being able to do this. Soon he will be too big to fit into my lap. Soon he will not need me to come comfort him in the middle of the night. I won't always have it. And I wanna soak in every moment of the things that I prayed for. So many times we miss our blessings and we miss we miss looking at the things that we've prayed for and appreciating the things we prayed for because we are so focused on what's going wrong, what's not right, what feels wrong, what's not the most pleasurable thing right now, instead of really trying to look at, wow, I prayed for this. And again, I never want to stifle anybody's feelings. I, I, I will never encourage you just be positive all the time and don't know, acknowledge your feelings. You feel that frustration? Cool. Now take a breather. Your child is not trying to ruin your life. They just want their mommy to comfort them. And you have the opportunity of doing that. I try to live life in a way of if something happens to anyone that I love, that I have spent my time with them, loving them, 
pouring into them, spending time with them, doing my best to show up and be the best version of myself. And for my two-year-old, what he needs is a patient, loving, and comforting mom. We often complain about cleaning up our homes and cooking dinner and, you know, the things that can feel very mundane and they can feel very uh, repetitive because these things don't just magically go away. These are things we have to do to survive, to keep our homes in order, to feed our families, right? I encourage you to please try to find the silver lining. Silver lining being you have food to cook. You get to nurture your family. You get to be creative. I also started making the mundane things a fun experience. One of the most nostalgic things, and when I say nostalgic, not even from my childhood, just from me creating my own moments, putting on some good music. I love a good jazz, calming situation, or listening to like an ebook, pouring myself a glass of wine and cooking dinner. It makes it a different experience. I'm not so focused on like having to stand in the kitchen. I make it an experience. I make it a thing, or I'll put on music for the household so that everybody's in, in a nice good mood. And the same thing with cleaning, I'll put on music and enjoy myself and take pride in the fact that I get to create this space around me. So this idea of I have to do, that is not something that you just apply to the things that are hard in your life. You will gain things that you love and you will not appreciate it because eventually they will become things you have to do. You will pray for the business to take off and then the business takes off and you have to fulfill orders, you have to keep showing up, you have to keep building that business and eventually they will start to feel like I have to, ugh, I have to work, I have to package these orders, I have. This is a mindset. And that's what I'm trying to get at. There are people who operate in gratitude and they find gratitude in every area of their lives, even in the places that don't feel the greatest. They find the thing to be grateful for. And then there's the other side of that. There are people who look at things and will find something to complain about about everything. What side of the fence do you want to be on? And it will take time to get your mind into the gratitude state. We hear gratitude and it sounds so cheesy because I feel like it's everywhere now. It's definitely a buzzword. But breaking that down further, it is learning to romanticize your life. It is learning to look around at what you may have prayed for one day and realize that those are answered prayers happening. But it will be really hard to appreciate those things if you feel it is an obligation and not a blessing. Now, I'll definitely say this. If you are only doing obligatory things, so coming in, cooking for your family, then cleaning the house, then putting the kids to bed, then falling asleep and waking up to the kids, and then taking the kids to school, and then going to work. And if, if your life is full of only the things that you need to do in order to maintain your life, then it will be really hard for you to find a break and to find the beauty in those things. Make sure to find time to do the things that fuels you. I've spoken on this in all of my videos, but it is key. Putting things on the schedule has proven to motivate people to get through the week, to get through the things that may feel tough and to get through them with a better attitude. So scheduling a dinner date, a massage, a class, a day off. Maybe Friday is your day to take your bath, you read a book, have something on the schedule that you are looking forward to. Things that you do to celebrate yourself, to reset, things that you enjoy, things that are, that are just for enjoyment and not things that have to be done in order to maintain. Because as much as I can talk about appreciating the things that you get to do, it's gonna be really hard to do that when you don't have things that you just enjoy. We're not here to just work and clean and knock off our, our list of chores. More importantly, we're here to fulfill our souls. We're here to do things that bring us joy. We're here to add to this world, to fulfill our gifts and our dreams. Pouring time into things that pour into you, that make you feel better about yourself, that make you feel full, that help you to move forward in your life, help you to maintain the good things in your life. That is such a crucial part of being able to approach things with the I get to attitude rather than the I have to attitude. As always, you're human. You're gonna have moments where things get overwhelming, where you just feel overworked, you need a break. Hence why rest, regular rest is important. But that should not be a regular way of life. Finding balance and finding ways to romanticize your life. And like I said, if right now you are in a period, maybe you have three little ones and maybe you're doing this by yourself and you barely have time, romanticize the things that you do get to do. I'm telling you, find some good music, dance around your kitchen as you're cooking, make something that excites you, try something new with the, with the ingredients you have, make it exciting and make it something to look forward to. No lie, I have made every area of my life feel good. That's because these last few months of refiguring out my direction and where I wanna go have been tough. It's been mentally tough, and it's been emotionally tough, spiritually tough, it's just been really, really tough. And what I started doing was making sure that when I'm making the bed, I am listening to something that makes me 
me feel good, whether it's music or ebook or audiobook. When I'm taking my shower, music or affirmations, I'm feeling good. I make sure I do like a spa scrub in there. It's, it smells like the spa. Making breakfast, I'm dancing, I'm singing. You know, walking my dog with my son, I make sure that he gets time to play by the trees and he has fun and he's laughing and we're joking and we're playing games. I'm only speaking from experience because I'm someone who in the past could easily go down the path of mundane of seeing the dark side of so many things it tried to creep back up on me in these last few months and it almost had me in a chokehold <laughs> it really had me in a headlock i'm telling you and i had to work and fight to get my mind back to seeing the positive in what i have and lately my prayers have been being grateful to be in a warm home or a cool home and to have food on our table and to have moments of just sitting with my husband and moments of laughter with my son and these are the things that like i've been holding on to as i'm in this transition so of course i want to give you some direct steps to do and they're going to be really really quick step one make a list of the things you feel like are a drag the things that every day they just feel repetitive and over and over and you have to and you just don't want to after you make this list and i mean list all the things let's turn those things around let's word them in a way of i get to and look at the silver lining now i'm not talking about just like i gotta go to work i get to go to work no that's cheesy and that's not gonna help anybody right <laughs> i get to earn money for myself which allows me to pay my bills which allows me to live where i live which allow me to keep the lights on it allows me to keep food on the table for my family or for myself it allows me to put gas in my car and it may not be that much but i'm glad that i get to do that and i am working towards something better that's another thing be working towards better if you are not happy with where you are i am working towards something better i am working towards a different job i'm working towards building my own thing but in this moment i'm grateful that i have this because i know that i could not have that i know that i could not have money to pay my rent or not have food on the table because it happens to people every day i have to take the kids to school i get time in the car with my kids in the morning i can play their favorite songs we can sing together we can talk about their day we can talk about what they're looking forward to i have children who are healthy alive and well that is a blessing in itself the fact that i'm complaining about having to take them to school and not something more serious is a blessing to me so i want to switch this around and i want to be totally grateful for the blessings i have i want god to know that i'm grateful for these blessings i may be frustrated i may get tired i may get overwhelmed but i am blessed and able to take my babies to school i'm grateful easier said than done these are things that you have to work on make a detailed list and let's turn it around and truly pour into these answers what can you be appreciative about with this situation for example for me we've been living in this town home for almost nine years we've been looking into buying our dream home and searching for the right place for about two years now we've been really serious about it i had so many things to complain about so many things it's loud around here the parking situation i've been humbled because the things i was focused on before i no longer had those things to focus on and i really had to look around like i'm grateful i need to be grateful for this home this beautiful home that we have built and decorated to make it feel warm and comfortable and the money to pay rent to be able to live in a spacious town home i had to like really pour into myself like hey you're being ungrateful for the blessings that you do have my my needs and my wants have changed since we've been here i know what i want now but i can be working towards that and doing all the things and speaking it into existence and be excited about that coming and also super appreciative of where i'm at super appreciative of what I do have, of the opportunities that I have, of the support I have from my husband and the relationships I have. There's so many things to focus on. It is really, really true that where your attention goes is where energy flows. And if you are constantly talking about the things that you don't want, talking about the things that are wrong, that is what will magnify in your world. And you will continue to attract things or look for things or see things to complain about turning that around and finding things to be grateful for looking at the things that are going right and feeling good about that that is one of the main things of law of attraction it's not about faking it don't fake it don't say i love this apartment i could live here forever no but i'm grateful for it the key is to truly look at the things that you are grateful for in that situation not to make it up so check yourself find your grit find your gratuity thank you 
find your gratitude in your situations and as you practice this over and over you're going to see how natural it is for you to find the thing to be grateful for and as you focus more on those things you you are raising your vibration what that means without sounding all woo woo it means that the more that you feel joy genuine joy about those things you get happier you become more joyful you are radiating just like happiness and the more you get to do that the more that you are raising this joy and the more that you are attracting like a magnet more joyful experiences so do your best to focus on those things and it's not to think i can never have a bad thought we're human that's okay but let your primary thoughts be the ones of gratitude because the only thing that you're doing to yourself and complaining and focusing on those things is making yourself feel terrible make it a selfish thing i want to feel really good and i want to attract more and more good things and the more that you do this the more that it'll become a habit and lastly start to be really mindful be mindful in the moment and catch yourself complaining catch yourself in those moments of focusing on all the negative things what usually happens is you focus on one negative thing and then you see something else that's negative and now you're going down a spiral and you're just feeling bad and now you have an attitude with your partner or your friend or your or your child and sometimes i'm in a great mood and i get a notification on my phone that is something that i'm upset that, I, that i'm not happy with you know now my son is tugging at me and now i'm like wait a minute he had nothing to do with that that was me being frustrated here so now i'm frustrated here and it really is a it's an energy it's a transferred energy and think about it when you're in a happy mood you just got good news aren't you happier with your children aren't you happier with your partner trying to put yourself in that state as much as possible it is good for your mind it is good for your heart it's literally good for your body it's good for the people around you and it is amazing in attracting and helping you have the ideas and the clarity to get to a better space than where you are right now if that's your goal or to maintain pour into and solidify the things that you do have right now that are working nothing wants to stick around if it's not appreciated i would suggest making that that reworded list the i get to list have that in your notes so that you start to become conscious in the moments that you are doing a uh i have to and you can say your affirmation that is the opposite of what you're feeling right now having that list handy is very very helpful it's a way to in the moment practice redirecting your thoughts as always these are habits. Your habit has been to complain. Your habit has been to say, I have to. That has been your habit. So it's going to take time to turn that around. But perspective is everything. The way that you look at something is the way that it is in your world. And I promise you, you can find a problem to complain about with everything. You can get a million dollars and complain about the taxes. You can get a new home and complain about keeping up with it. That's a mindset. And if we want to go forward and actually enjoy the things that we have and learn how to appreciate the things we have to the fullest, to pour into our relationships, to pour into the things that we have and to live a more joyous life, changing your perspective is key because that mindset is not just with one thing and you're finding it really hard to be grateful and be happy and find that joy this is a huge part of it as always my spiel none of this happens overnight this takes consistency and it takes repetitiveness it takes showing up even when especially when you don't feel like it because those are usually the moments that you're in a lower frequency those are usually in the moments where you want to just complain and you want to bask in it and that's your comfort your comfort is doing that if you've been doing it for so long and so it's going to be hard in those moments to turn it around and say the positive thing and when you first say it it's going to feel like gibberish but connect to what you wrote down if you wrote down something that really means something to you connect to that and say it from your heart and say it over and over and over and over sometimes putting my hand on my heart helps me to connect sometimes we get so focused on the things that we want and the things that we are going after and upgrading that we lose sight of the blessings that are right in front of us of the answered prayers that are here as you start to turn this around, you're going to be so shocked at the things that you were taking for granted and how joyful life actually can be. Take your time. Allow it to sink in. Do your homework. Continue doing it. Continue showing up. If you've been watching my videos, I pray that you are stacking these things one by one, working on your truest self. I thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any uploads. And until next time, keep living in love, in light, and in your truth. Mwah. Bye.